Many years ago, I had the privileged experience of walking around the city of Jerusalem for a day with a wonderful woman by the name of Rachel, who was a neighbor of my mom, who was living there at the time. Rachel made a comment that I found very interesting and in that she said that living there is difficult because of the tension that exists between the different religious groups. It made me realize that despite the fact that there's hundreds of people, thousands living in one city, that those people live in proximity to each other and not in community with each other. I then thought of the many organizations or even other cities that exist and how a group of people can exist in proximity but not in community. The next question became, well, how does one move from proximity to community? Or how do you move a group of people from proximity to community? And as I reflected on that question for the next few months, I came up with three what I termed organizing signals. Signals that would shift and catalyze from proximity to community. The first is crisis. Crisis is a powerful organizing signal because a group of people in crisis will rally together to support each other to get through a crisis. We're seeing that right now in our country, many examples of where communities are working together to support each other through a crisis. People that haven't known each other before, people that have been in proximity with each other, but are now working closely together in community. The second organizing signal is challenge. I mean, one only has to stand on the side of a great challenge like the Comrades Marathon to see a group of people on the side of the road and group of people on the road all of a sudden rallying together to ensure that everybody gets to the finish line. Challenge is a powerful organizing signal because it brings people into community to work towards common goals, realizing that they need each other to get there. The third organizing signal is cause. And cause for me is one of the most powerful organizing signals. Cause is seen in our many faith-based communities or in movements and NGOs and groups like uh, Greenpeace, where people are coming together out of a shared belief system at times are even willing to identify that they are with that community by wearing a uniform and ultimately believe that their shared belief system will make a difference to the world when it is expressed. Cause is a powerful catalyst to move people from proximity to community. Right now, we're in crisis. We're going to be having to take on many challenges as we navigate out this crisis and start to rebuild our, our, our businesses and restore our economy. But the opportunity that exists right now for organizations and for leaders in particular is to leverage on the organizing signal of cause in order to build cause-driven cultures, which in turn have the ability to not only navigate crisis and the upcoming challenges, but are also are able to put the building blocks in place to create a really significant culture that will set that business up for long-term success with a sustained community who have really bought in to the potential that they can realize together. In order to build a cause-driven community or to leverage on the organizing signal of cause, the first thing that we have to do is we have to inspire hope. Crisis and challenge often work off the back of fear. Cause works off the back of hope and hope sets up the right emotional tone for people to put their hands to meaningful work in order to navigate crisis and challenge as well as create a preferred future. By inspiring people, you're rallying them into a contributive mindset, which is the second part of building a cause-driven culture. It's this idea that what we do is for the benefit of our people internally and our external stakeholders, our customers and suppliers. Cause really says that we as a business, it's not just about us getting through this and rectifying our bottom line. It's about the fact that we are able to contribute both towards the lives of the people internally the lives of the people that surround us, customers and suppliers, as well as the economy at large. And the third aspect of building a cause-driven culture is to integrate our values into everything that we do. Values are central to how we do things around here. They're not just meant to be there for when times are good. Values have the ability to support an organization to navigate tough terrain. If we bring our values into this next season, we can help people emotionally connect with them and show them that by living our values, we can achieve so much, whether it's navigating crisis, taking on challenges, or creating a really significant organization. By leveraging on this aspect of cause, not only will we navigate crisis and challenge, but we will create an organization that actually fosters a culture that will be powerful for both now and for the next few months, but also for the long term. And this could be the opportunity for us to build a type of culture that we need 
in order to really see our businesses thrive into the future and make a significant difference to this country and to our economy. As leaders, I encourage you to leverage on the organizing signal of cause and not just to leverage on this idea of crisis and challenge. As you inspire people into the future, we need organizations that have got this contributive mindset toward what can be if we as South Africans are working together to create the organizations and the country that we need to see in the future. We look forward to putting more out there on this as we continue to hold into the belief that good culture is good business and that good culture is what we need right now in the next few months and then of course in the many years to come.